This week on Full Circle Florida, make or break. Did Ron DeSantis do enough in the first Republican debate to turn his campaign around? Our discussion this week. Plus, all the president's men turning themselves in as Trump goes down to Georgia, still crushing it in the polls, but now facing a mounting pile of charges and possible prison. So, what's next? Ramaswamy tsunami, the rise of the American business mogul. How far could he realistically go? And my one on one interview with Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunez is anyone actually looking out for Floridians while the governor is out of state campaigning? All right, let's get right to our discussion this week. She is the founder and the president of Summit Communication Strategies, political strategist Janelle Irwin. Taylor is joining us. Thank you so much for being here again. Thanks for having Appreciate me. It. All right, so your thoughts on this debate. Uh, did anyone stand out? How would you grade Ron DeSantis? I guess we should start there. There were definitely some standouts. Um, I don't think ultimately that matters in the grand scheme of things, but there were some standouts. DeSantis was not one of them. Um, he had a do no harm sort of performance, I think, last night. Um, there were a, a lot of awkward moments for him. He had a very kind of plastered on fake smile in a lot of places. <laughs> like if he was trying to unwind the impression that he's not relatable or likable, he didn't accomplish that. But he avoided as the, the number two person who was the top polling candidate on that stage, of course, with Donald Trump not there. Yeah. He should have been taking all of the barbs, and he didn't. Yeah, the knives were not out for exactly. him. They were out from for Ramaswamy, it seemed like. And the whole the structure of this debate rule, where if you get attacked, it's almost a gift because you get 30 seconds to respond. So mm -hmm. if I'm a candidate, I'm like, attack away. You know, it gives me more oxygen. Yeah. They kind of ignored him. DeSantis, he only got, he was in fourth for the amount of airtime that yeah. he got in last night's debate. And for the top polling candidate on that stage, that's not what you want to see happen. But he was able to avoid some of the criticism and he was able to really lean into his angry Republican routine <laughs> that stirs up the base. And, you know, yeah. quite frankly, in today's Republican Party, fear tends to win. Well, it mimics DeSantis, it mimics Trump to a yeah. large degree. And, and obviously he Trump wasn't there, but if you're not helping yourself, you might be hurting himself uh, with the way his campaign has been going of mm -hmm. late. So on that note, did anyone else stand out to you? Was there a spark with anyone or the others that, that we could maybe ignite their campaign going forward? Sure. So Vivek uh, Ramaswamy, he, yeah. he obviously got a significant amount of airtime. He was the one suffering the brunt of the criticism. He kind of very quickly established himself as the candidate that none of the other candidates liked. There were a lot of tense moments. Uh, he had one sparring back and forth with former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley yeah. over foreign policy in which she basically outshouted him. Um, so it wasn't really a good look, A, that he was trying to outshout a woman and B, that he lost in doing so, so do you, um, do you think Haley and and I'm hearing Mike Pence did, did they both overperform in the sense that they exceeded expectations? Definitely, I think you will probably see a little bit of a boost for both of them. Again, I don't think it matters in the grand <laughs> scheme of things. Donald Trump is not going to budge from his his position at the top, but I think we will see them kind of climb their way up, and I think we'll see DeSantis come down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I think if Republicans were really looking to rally around somebody who isn't named Donald Trump, I think that they would do really well to get behind Nikki Haley because she is really, and she acknowledged this last night, she's really the one who seems to have the firmest grasp on how to win a general election, right, right. not just a primary. Yeah, and the Margaret Thatcher line was uh, perfect in that moment. Yeah. Uh, are, are these debates uh, taking on greater importance at this point uh, in the political season? We're going to have more of these. and and. Could they eclipse the day to day campaign trail when it comes to moving the needle, assuming that they start loading up these debates on the calendar? Yeah, so I think debates are kind of becoming almost what yard signs have be <laughs> have become, right? Like, do they actually matter or is it just something that we feel like we have to do? Mm. Certainly voters enjoy them, but I saw one comparison to a hockey game where it's you're not necessarily watching the game play and the strategy and who are you putting where, when are you pulling your goalie. You're watching to see when somebody gets punched in the face. <laughs> and it feels like that's kind of what's happening with debates, but the free airtime for some of these candidates, especially in the early days, is very important as they're clamoring to right. catch up to Trump. It's one stop shop. If you're not sitting close to the opera every day of the news cycle, this is your one chance to get a glimpse of, of who's doing what. Yep. Um, meanwhile, uh, the guy who wasn't there, uh, <laughs> uh, the Trump show continues uh, and, and, you know, he's 
you know, turning himself in uh, to the uh, Fulton County Jail. A uh, part of the bond agreement that he's had with multiple, uh, uh, you know, cases here includes not intimidating co-defendants, <laughs> witnesses, or victims in the case, including on social media. Um, how realistic is it that Trump could potentially wind up in jail because he violates his bond, and how could that actually help him, uh, at least on that side of things? Well, first of all, that mugshot is going to, you know, uh, that's going to raise him money, so he's got that going for him. And then if, if you're talking about the potential for him getting actually arrested and put into jail for violating the terms of his bond agreement, a, I think that he will violate <clears throat> to some degree. I, I don't think he can help himself. Um, B, though, I don't think anybody's actually going to put him in jail. Like I, the logistics, the problems with Fulton County Jail that we've seen well, very widely documented, I, I find it hard to believe that they would overcome that logistical nightmare. I just wondered, nightmare. is it dangerous for the country for that to happen? Now are we ratcheting up to another level? I mean, he was on Tucker and they had this sort of weird conversation yeah. about a civil war and yeah. open conflict. Is that where we want to take this? We let the voters decide and, and see where this plays out. I mean, out. I think we have seen from Fonnie Willis that she is unwilling to um, suffer any kind of shenanigans. Mm. So, I mean, I think that she's going to try her best to really dig in and enforce the terms of that bond. I'm just concerned that at some point her hands are going to be tied because yeah. what's worse for the country? The image of a president, a former president being behind bars or the need to keep him from stirring some of these emotions. Those emotions are going to get stirred with or without him behind the keyboard. On it Truth was Social. so interesting to not see him on the stage uh, at this debate and and wondering, OK, is he when is he going to get back up on the debate stage and how might that completely change everything? Next on Full Circle Florida is Hawaii. President Biden's Katrina moment plus the rise of Ramaswamy. Too little too late. We discuss.